Hi there everyone, and that title looks like a bit of a mouthful, doesn't it? Biogeochemical cycles. So we've talked about the way that organisms interact a little bit, but before we go on to think about ecosystems properly, we need to talk about the chemistry of the biosphere, the chemistry of the Earth's systems. There are many different cycles that affect our ability to live on the Earth. We need many different substances to continue living. And so we're going to go through some of the most important cycles that give us access to the elements and minerals that we require. So the Earth systems are all about the movement of energy and we could ask of that energy where does it all come from or where does it all go? The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can never be created or destroyed, it can only be transformed and energy and matter is transformed many times in the earth systems and it has to keep going somewhere and so it goes in cycles. So if we look at all the life forms on earth we can see that they are composed of just four elements and if you have a quick guess as to what those are the thing is though atoms are not destroyed very often in normal circumstances so the same molecules have been going around for millions of years in what's called biogeochemical cycles bio is a prefix that relates to life like in biology geo is a prefix that relates to the earth such as in geology or geography chemical is of course relating to natural substances and then a cycle is something that goes around so you put that together and you have various different biological chemicals going round and round in the Earth's systems. And exactly which elements are they that we need so much? Well, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen are the four biggest. And we're also going to be looking at phosphorus too. So as we said, a cycle is characterized by going round and round and round and round. The last step feeding the first step so that the whole thing can begin again. So because of the elements that make us, the most important cycles we make use of are the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle and the phosphorus cycle. So the water cycle is otherwise known as the hydrologic cycle. If you've ever studied the water cycle before, then just take a moment to try and sketch it out. Pause the video and sketch what you remember. And if you have done that, then your sketch should have looked at least a little bit like this. And it shows how the energy from the sun evaporates water from everywhere but especially the oceans it travels over the land as clouds it rains it goes into the rivers and into the groundwater and eventually finds its way back to the sea and that is the water cycle why is water important to us well water makes up 70 percent of your body roughly and oxygen and hydrogen are required in all the other different biological molecules so we need to get new oxygen and hydrogen into our bodies and one of the most effective ways to do that is through H2O water so hydrogen ions are also required as part of photosynthesis and so water is the most effective way to get that for plants as well. So basically water is essential for almost all organisms on earth. 
So water is also important simply because it is a good solvent. It is a good place for biological chemistry to happen. And that's why we think life may have begun at the bottom of the ocean. It has a high specific heat capacity, which means it, it takes a lot of energy to make it change temperature. And so it's a good liquid for living systems to use to regulate themselves. It helps them keep what is called homeostasis. If a living system loses homeostasis, then it very quickly becomes not a living system anymore. So if we want to summarize the water cycle in its simplest form, we could say it boils down to evaporation and condensation. The sun's energy makes water go up and gravity brings it back down again. Of course, there's a little bit more to it than that as the diagram shows you. So next we're going to look at the carbon cycle and although it's not as cyclic as the water cycle, it is still easy to see how carbon moves around to different reservoirs in the Earth's system. And carbon is one of the most important elements for life and in the center there you can see how carbon comes out of the atmosphere as photosynthesis happens and is replaced in the atmosphere by the respiration of animals and also the emissions of humans. And then carbon is also found in the rocks and in the respiration of microbes and bacteria as well as marine life too. So the four main carbon reservoirs in the biosphere are CO2 gas in the atmosphere, dissolved CO2 in the ocean, in organisms and rocks and soil on land, and also found as fossil fuels and also calcium carbonate rock underground. Pop quiz. Thinking back to the diagram, where does most of the CO2 in the atmosphere come from? So the atmosphere is one of the most changeable reservoirs of carbon. What are some of the ways that carbon changes into gaseous form? So the first way is volcanic activity. Another way is human activity, burning of fossil fuels, etc. Cellular respiration from animals and also the decomposition of dead organisms as their bodies rot away. All of these can put carbon into the atmospheric system. So why is carbon important again? Well, as we said, it is crucial to life. In fact, we are known as carbon-based life forms and it's found in all of the major biological molecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And here are some examples of those. Do you know which is which? I'll leave you to ponder. Next, we're going to look at the nitrogen cycle and you can still see a clear set of steps here, but it's not as cyclic as the water cycle again. But nitrogen is 78% of the Earth's atmosphere and that's where we find a lot of the nitrogen in the Earth's system. But this nitrogen gas is very, very stable in the atmosphere. So how do we get it out? Well, it can be broken down by lightning and volcanic activity, but one of the more common natural processes for getting nitrogen from the atmosphere is by bacteria. So why is nitrogen important? Well, the bases in DNA are nitrogenous bases. Adenine is also used in ATP. ATP is part of the energy exchange system for all organisms. 
and it's the amino part of amino acids. Nitrogen is part of all these biological elements. So as we said, 79, oh, I said 78. A lot of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen gas, but it's no good to us there. We don't breathe nitrogen, and the bond in N2 gas is so strong it can be broken by what? Can you remember? Lightning, volcanic activity, and also a few special bacteria. So those bacteria come in many types and some live independently but others exist in a symbiotic relationship with plants called legumes and in the root nodules of these plants bacteria called rhizobia live and convert nitrogen from the air into something the plant can use. And the last cycle we're going to look at is the phosphorus cycle and here it is. So phosphorus for our purposes it starts in the land and weathering of rocks releases phosphates into the soil and the water. Phosphates are compounds, are mixtures which have phosphorus in it, not pure phosphorus itself. So producers absorb phosphates from soil and water. It's one of the nutrients that they require and it goes into the plant cycle and from there it moves into other organisms via the food chain. So phosphates move through the food webs in both land and water going from producers in the water, the bacteria and plankton to the fish and higher members of marine food chains. Eventually though, phosphates return to the soil from waste of creatures or from the decomposition of their bodies when they are dead. Eventually, those phosphates are not taken in by new producers and eventually they are formed into new rocks and this completes the cycle. Although, of course, much of the phosphorus can stay in the food webs for a long time before it eventually falls into sediments. And the phosphorus cycle is the only cycle we've looked at which does not at any point really cycle through the atmosphere. Although some phosphorus can be released in volcanic eruptions. So why is phosphorus important? Well, it's part of DNA and RNA. If you remember, it is part of the spine of the genetic molecule, the sugar phosphate chain. It also transfers energy in the body of all living creatures. Adenosine triphosphate is how your body uses energy to do anything. And it also makes phospholipids, which are the fat-based molecules that form the membranes of all your cells. So phosphorus is really a very important element for life. So let's just review all of those biogeochemical cycles before we finish. The water cycle is the most well known and basically the sun's energy lifts water up from the ocean and into the atmosphere. Eventually gravity brings it back down and it passes back into the Earth's surface systems. The carbon cycle on the other hand is about the movement of carbon often out of the atmosphere by photosynthesis and back in through other respiration and waste processes. Carbon also moves through the soil and there are other biological and microbial processes going on there. And of course, it's part of the soil, part of the rocks, and there's a large amount of it kept in the deep ocean too. So the nitrogen cycle is all about getting that precious nitrogen from the atmosphere and 
breaking that stable bond and bacteria and lately our technology has been able to do this and this allows us to get nitrogen which we really need into the terrestrial and marine food webs eventually this nitrogen is either returned to the atmosphere or it builds up in rocks in sediments on the ocean floor and the cycle begins again and finally we looked at the phosphorus cycle which begins essentially in the rocks it is weathered away and dissolved into the soil and the water from there it is taken in by plants and phytoplankton it is used in marine and terrestrial food webs and then eventually when it falls out of the food web it falls back into sediments and is pushed back into the rocks and that's it more or less we've looked very briefly at biogeochemical cycles but I hope you get the general idea chemistry is constantly in motion in Earth's systems and all of the things we have talked about about competition and evolution and all of the things we will talk about in terms of ecosystems and the biosphere they all rely on these biogeochemical cycles to get the resources that they need to go on living. <laughs>